Hello friends, welcome back and uh, in today's video, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the constructors. So these are the four topics that we are going to discuss today in this video. So one is the constructor, what are the constructors, why we use them, how we define the constructors, can we use them with and without the default arguments, why we are saying that we can use them with and without uh, default arguments that we are going to see in today's video. Apart from that, we can see like if we can call the constructors explicitly or not, what is the meaning of explicit calling of the constructor that all we are going to see. And ultimately, we will see one tricky question that is mostly asked uh, in the interviews. And uh, it's a kind of, you know, it's a kind of exercise, a tricky exercise for you as well to see uh, the beauty of C++ language, how you can perform the things. Okay, so let us see about the constructors. So constructors are basically used to, you know, initialize an object. Okay, what does this mean? Suppose I have a vehicle and I'm just, or uh, you can say like you can uh, give the name as student, okay, and I have the student name, care st name, 32 characters maximum, and it's like I'm I'm not going to give anything here, and then uh, you know care dob date of birth that can be of you know 12 characters. And then we have the public section. Okay, suppose we want to create the object of a student, and at the at the time of creation of this student object, we want that we initialize the value of student name and date of birth when we are initializing it, right? Normally, what you do when you create this student object, then then you will write something like this: student st. In this case, the student st object will be created. But if we write some function here. Okay, let me write like void details, display details. Okay, then in that case, if I'm just going to write like C out, C out, and then ENDL name, name is something like, you know, ST name, and then we have C out. E N D L D date of birth. So it can be D O B. Okay, let me just do D O B. Okay, so these two things we are going to display in here. So now if I do something like this, ST dot display details. Since I want to access this display details function, so I have placed this display detail function in the public section. So if I run this, if I build this and run this, then you can see that the date of birth and the student name, they will not be printed correctly. <coughs> if I run this, then you will be able to see that it will not display anything or it will be a garbage which will be displayed. So you can see, you can see the name and the date of birth both have been displayed as something garbage. But if you want to initialize these, you know, values in the beginning at the startup when you are creating the object, then in that case, we need to write the constructors. So constructors are used to initialize an object and the constructors are called automatically when you create the object. Okay. So suppose how you write the constructor. So first thing is that the name of the constructor, constructor is just like a function but it doesn't have any return type it has the same name as your class name okay so if, if i have to write a constructor of class student then i will write something like this a student okay and now i will just i can just initialize it either with the you know empty values so if i want to initialize it with empty values then i can write like str cpy and then i can do uh, st name and then I can, you know, give the name here like some, you know, empty value we can put like it can be empty. And then the same thing I can do with the date of birth. So it's date of birth and it's also empty. So now if you run this, you will be able to see the display result, display details uh, like these will be empty. Both the values will be empty because as soon as you call this, as soon as you create the object, 
of this class a student then your constructor will be called as I told you the constructors are always have the same name as the class name and they don't have any return type okay <clears throat> so uh, let us do this and let us see how the constructor is called so I have placed the breakpoint here you can just simply click here and press F9 or if you simply click here then you can you know if you put a, a cursor here and if you press F9 then also you will be able to see a breakpoint otherwise you can come here directly click on it and you will be able to see the breakpoint here so now I'm going to debug it so if I run this then I can see there is something okay okay so it is asking me to use the strcpy underscore s so let me use the s okay you can use the strcpy as well but in my compiler it's like deprecated so because it's a 2019 compiler so that's why okay so as soon as a student st was called this particular you know constructor getting called this constructor is nothing but just like a function but it doesn't take any it, it it doesn't have any return type okay it can take arguments but it doesn't have any return type okay so now if I go through this then you can see that it has provided the values as ST name and date of birth both has empty and now if we print it then you can see both has been printed empty name is there is nothing after the name there is nothing after the date of birth so this is how the constructors are called constructors are basically just the functions just like the functions they have the same name as the class name these two things you must need to remember and they don't have any return type so three things you must need to note about the constructors have the same name as class name you know they they don't have any return type and they are called as soon as you create an object okay so this is known as the uh, you know constructor this function which you create right so they are just like the function they are just like the functions okay so this way you can understand what is a constructor and now uh, with these constructors you have seen this is one of the method to initialize something okay and now I can add one more like int n roll number and I can and I can initialize that n roll number as well with you know zero because zero cannot be a roll number so I have given the default value default value as zero you can create your own function here uh, which can be you know uh, which can set the values but yes we can create the constructor as well you can write any function here like void set student records set student details right you can write like some function like this set student details and then you can you know pass in here the name the date of birth and the roll number all these things you can pass here and inside the function you can perform these things whatever you are performing and providing the values that have been given in this function so that way you can do but at the at the time of creation of the object with the help of constructor itself also you can do that so you can see one more thing before we move ahead this is the constructor and constructor need to be public if you want to get it called if you will make it private suppose if you put this uh, you know uh, this section uh, on top of this then in that case it will face a problem and it will uh, you know cause an issue because uh, you know it will be it will be a private now so the private members cannot be accessed outside the class so when outside the outside the class if you are calling this a student st you are creating the object of a student class inside the main function then it will see it will try to find out the it will try to call the uh, you know uh, constructor of the student class and uh, when it will not be able to call the constructor uh, because of being private it will report an error okay so the constructor need to be uh, you know public if you want them to be called implicitly you know as soon as you create your object right in some cases we make the constructors private and that is related to the you know uh, design patterns where the singleton design pattern we talk about but don't worry about them as of now we will discuss them in detail in coming videos uh, when the C++ course will be completed Completed, then we will discuss about the you know design patterns so uh, now let us see you can see that uh, this is just like a function the constructor but j just like the function can it accept the arguments yes it can very well accept the arguments so let me just put it like this 
okay here I'm just going to provide the you know name of the arguments like uh, you know const care asterisk st name and const care asterisk dob and then int n role num okay so this is how you can you know pass in the arguments and you can uh, now perform the operation of you know providing the values to the various you know properties of this student object so strcpy st name and here what you need to do since we are using the st name inside this class and we also got the st name inside the student constructor both have the same name so how you will distinguish this is the st name this is also st name so how you will distinguish we have to give the st name to this one so so we need to use the this keyword okay so this keyword is nothing but a pointer to the current object okay this keyword is a pointer to the current object that i need to put here this pointer is a pointer to current object we will see in detail about this this ob, uh, this uh, uh, pointer but yes here you can just simply understand that this pointer is just a pointer is just pointing to the same object in which you are in right so this pointer is a pointer to current object okay so st name and now you can put like st name this is the way you can do this and then for date of birth you can do the same thing this to date of birth and it will be like uh, dob okay so this is how both things worked and now you can do something like end roll number since both again are same so you can do like this this to end roll number is equal to end roll number okay so i hope now you might have understood that how you can provide the you know uh, values inside the uh, constructor and how you can initialize it right so now let us see if i do this and provide these arguments let me give uh, you know c out a and dl the roll number is you know it will be like n roll so whenever there is a conflict between the uh, current class object and the object uh, and the value that you might have passed in the constructor on the in the function and then in that case to refer to the current object value you need to use the this pointer just like here i have used i pass st name i have st name in the class itself so i have used this this to st name okay so this is how you can uh, give it and now i'm just going to give the name as you know here i'm going to give the name vikash and here i'm going to give my date of birth 25th march 1983 okay you can write like month date and year okay so this is how i am going to give it and now we will see how to represent it so why this is okay so here it is expecting a semicolon so now if you see this will call this constructor so let us see which constructor will be called okay so what is the issue okay so here i need to give one more thing which is a roll number because there are three arguments which have been passed here so three arguments i need to pass so let me run this and now the call will go to the second constructor which is the three argument constructor because we have provided the three arguments here okay so here you can see uh, st name has vikas so if i will go into this it will perform all the things and then after that when i will display the details it will display all the details correctly okay so i hope you might have understood till now like how you can call the uh, you know multiple argument constructors and uh, you know zero argument constructor how they they will be called if you simply write like this then single argument uh, zero argument constructor will be called and if you write like you know three arguments you will pass then in that case it will call this one okay but can we have default arguments as well for the constructor just like for the functions we have the default arguments can we have the uh, default arguments for the constructors as well the answer is yes very well we can have the default arguments for the constructors okay so here you can do like this null suppose if i want to just give the name and the date of birth and i can provide like uh, you know my roll number can be you know zero i can i want to provide this one so in that case uh, i can 
uh, give this like this to roll number is equal to n roll number okay so this is the way you can uh, perform it and now if I omit this roll number if I just give the name and I just give the date of birth uh, March 25th 1983 then in that case it will work fine it will show the details and it will show the roll number as zero I hope you might understood why it will give you zero so let me run it and let's see what comes in okay so here it has been you know it was overlapped so now let me see what will come out so here you can see the roll number is come out to be zero the date of birth is 25th March 1983 the name is fine but the roll number was zero so you can call these uh, you know default argument constructors as well the constructors can have the default arguments as well uh, this is the overall thing that I wanted to explain here now if I want to make everything as a default then what will happen will there be any problem these are the important concepts please note them down so uh, I can add one more point the constructors could have default arguments so I will just uh, you know uh, put uh, I will just pin the comment I will just copy paste all these things for your reference in the comment section and you, and you can make your notes as well so these notes will be smaller notes but they will explain you everything when you will revise them you will be able to you know cover up all the things in one go the constructors could have default arguments as well so that we have discuss now and now let us see if I make all the arguments as you know uh, default then what will happen <coughs> so if I compile this if I build this then you will be able to see a error why there will be error because uh, I have given this constructor as all of the three arguments are optional and here also I have one constructor which doesn't have any argument so when you are calling this when you are creating this object then compiler is not able to decide whether it need to call this constructor or this or this constructor okay so in this case the problem happened that uh, it is not able to decide it's a uh, ambiguity so in case of ambiguity it is not able to decide this constructor or this constructor need to be called and that is why it is causing the problem right so ambiguity ambiguity with with constructors need to be checked so you need to check whether any kind of uh, you know uh, ambiguity is there or not if there is there can be any ambiguity you need to remove that so if you make this like like this then in that case if you uh, you know uh, call this function and if you build this it will be perfectly fine it will be succeeded right and which argument which constructor it will call it will call this constructor the zero argument constructor so if I run this it will be able to call the zero argument constructor you can see here and it will display all those things which are related to the zero argument constructor okay so let me run it and now let us see all the things empty and the roll number is also zero so it has perfectly it was able to perfectly call this student uh, constructor because now we have removed the ambiguity I have just made this first argument as non default argument so when I created this then it was able to understand the compiler was able to understand that yes I need to call this one and not this one okay okay so uh, this is the one uh, we need to do apart from this you are initializing the values like here uh, can we there, can there be another way to initialize these things yes there is another way suppose you want to uh, you know uh, don't want to give this way like like this then in that case we can do something like this to no outside the constructor you cannot do that so n roll number is n roll number can we do this let us see and I'm just removing it from here so n roll number I'm providing in the n roll number so obviously we can see that there could be some ambiguity because we are not able to find out which one is there but still it compiles so in this case when you are giving this way then it is able to provide some value right so you don't have to worry in this case but in the but inside it will not be able to decide what n roll number you were trying to decide it right so now let me just uh, put in here all the 
default arguments let me remove them so this is another way to initialize it okay if you want to do something like this strcpy let me just control x and control v control x and control v then let's see what happens can we do this or not which one will give error let us see let us compile first so it is giving me the errors you can only do this thing oh, okay let me just remove this okay now let's see comma now let's see if it will be able to build or not okay so it will not be able to build the reason is that this is fine okay end roll number is fine you can provide the end roll number using the end roll number that is fine but if you have to call any function okay if you have to call any function then in that case that function call will not be allowed outside the constructor so all those things which are related to any function call where any function call is involved then in that case you must need to put that thing inside the you know constructor body okay but if there is something which you can directly assign like this end roll number you can put in end roll number here so in that case this is perfectly fine okay so now if you run it okay so here I need to put semicolon here I need to put semicolon and then I need to <coughs> compile it and let's see so this has been succeeded now so this is one of the another way to initialize uh, you know uh, the uh, and slice the values inside a constructor so outside the constructor body you can also do this thing so this is another way to initialize the values but what is the difference uh, basically in this case the object is created like the end roll number is created assigned to this and this object created because everything is an object in C this int is also an object we will discuss that uh, in detail in later this is in this int is also an object so when you will do this then the object is created instantly and you know this temporary object is destroyed instantly okay so <coughs> sorry so for this object you don't need to there is no need to initialize any specific memory inside the memory area so this is the way to you know save some space some uh, space at runtime when your program is running and initializing your objects so this end roll number you are providing this end roll number to this end roll number so here it is this is the temporary object and this temporary object is getting assigned to this and this is getting the value from this end roll number and getting destroyed so that is why these practices are really good most of the places you will be able to see these kind of initialization as well okay so you can add one more point here outside the constructor Initial initialization saves some memory while creating creating object okay so this is the thing uh, which you can understand here and uh, now let us see one more concept related to the constructors uh, and that concept is you know I think the camera is moving but don't worry about that so uh, because you have to look into this screen only where I'm you know teaching you the uh, you know uh, the programming not uh, my face so uh, you can see here like um, a student uh, you can see there are two are there are two constructors one is with zero arguments one is with uh, three arguments so now let us see if I remove this one if I comment this one suppose I'm commenting this one what will happen if I uh, you know call this one will it still be called it will complain an error right but if you remove this one as well then what will happen if I remove that one as well then in that case it is perfectly fine to succeed it will be compiled perfectly so what happened when this was there Okay, let me just remove what happened when this was there but this was not there I didn't have I don't have a zero argument constructor uh, and I have a three argument constructor okay and I'm trying to create a zero argument constructor object object with uh, which can be initialized using a zero argument constructor so in that case it is giving me problems why the reason is that if 
you have provided this is very important concept if you have provided any constructor with more than with uh, one or more arguments then it's your responsibility to provide a zero argument constructor as well okay but if you don't if you don't have more than if you don't have one or more than one argument constructor then you don't need to provide zero argument constructor then who will provide it compiler will by default provide zero arg ctor so i'm going to write constructor in you know ctor constructor means ctor so this is uh, one of the important things that you must need to understand so I'm just putting like this so I am putting it inside the other kind of comment so these are your notes basically you can take them as notes and examples you are able to see so if you have any zero argument const if you have any two or three argument constructor and if you want to call any, if you want to create any object with zero argument constructor to initialize it, then in that case, it is your responsibility to provide the one. But if you don't provide any of the three, two, or any number of argument constructor, then by default, constructor provides a zero argument constructor. Compiler provides a zero argument constructor. Compiler by default provides you a zero argument constructor when you don't provide any of the constructors. Okay, but if you have provided any two or three argument constructor, then it is your responsibility to provide a zero argument constructor as well in case you are going to create one object. Let me tell you one thing that if you are, you know, if you just make it like com uh, commented and if you create like this, Vikash and then date of birth, you can put like 25th March, something like that, uh, 1983, and then roll number can be 1000. Then in that case, if you call this, if you compile this, then there will be no issue. Then there will be no issue because you are not creating any object with zero argument. But if you create any zero argument, uh, if you call any zero argument constructor, because constructor are called implicitly. So if you call this, if you create this object, then zero argument constructor will be called. But since you have provided one three argument constructor, so you must have to provide this one. If you will, if you will not provide, then in that case, compiler will also not provide. And in that case, you will get an error. I hope you might have understood this concept. Okay. So this is a bit, you know, complicated. It's, it's not a bit complicated. You can say it's a bit tricky concept. And if you remember this, then you are very well versed with the constructors and you know the, all the basic things that you must know about the constructors. Okay. So let me just remove it. Okay. So now this is fine. And now let us see another thing here related to the constructors. So we have seen this thing as well, defining constructor with and without default arguments that we have discussed, calling constructors explicitly. Can I call the constructors explicitly? What will happen? Okay. So let me call the constructor explicitly. Explicitly means a student. I simply call the student. Okay. I'm calling this student. Okay. So this one is getting called. Okay. So this one is getting called. This will be called perfectly fine. Student will be called. And if I put the, you know, breakpoint here and let's see by running it, then you can see this is giving you an error because st is like, you know, this is not a variable, not an object. So you cannot call this because a student is itself, you know, is an object. So when you call the student, what will happen? This student object will be created at this line and as soon as you will reach to this line return zero, this student object will be destroyed. If you create any student ST like this, 
then this object is you know this object will be alive till the till this function is there i mean inside the main function till here before you return from the main function this object is alive but in case you have created something like this a student and you just call this like this manner then the object will be created at line number 56 and object will be destroyed as soon as you reach to the uh, you know 57 line number 57 so if you see this it will very well go into if you do the f11 it will very well go into the student constructor it will be able to you know do everything and then it will be at the next line the student object is destroyed this is not in a scope anymore okay so you will not be able to see until we write a destructor here but yes you can see uh, like this student object has been you know destroyed at line number 617 uh, 57 as soon as it reaches to line number 57 it leaves line number 56 the execution leaves line number 56 after that uh, the object get destroyed let me see where is my face so somehow it is getting yeah okay this is fine so now you might have understood so if i want to you know just display the results then in that case you can do something like this and let us see what happens so you can see i just run this and you can see everything will be printed here right things are printed but there was nothing in the one argument constructor so nothing was printed it was like empty empty and zero right so if i write something like this vikash and date of birth 25th March 1983 and then roll number as 1000 and then display results then in that case what will happen it will simply give you the results inside the display results so now you will be able to see the output like you know all these results have been printed name date of birth and the roll number everything printed in here okay so I hope you might have understood what was the concept related to the calling the student object, right? So, uh, you know, explicitly calling the constructor. You can call the explicitly, you can explicitly call the constructor. So what is the rule here? Uh, you know, object will be created on the line where it is called, it is calling constructor. and on very next line it will be destroyed okay so this is the rule related to the explicit calling of the constructor let me show you one more thing related to the calling of the constructor okay so let me do one thing here like If I create something like a student st, I have created this and inside the st, from the st, let me call this a student. Can I call this? I'm just going to call this, okay, with my name Vikash, 25th March 1983 and then roll number is 1000. So what will happen to this? Can I call this? Will it be a valid statement? No. The type student cannot appear on the right hand side of the member expression right so you cannot do this thing okay so one more thing you need to remember is that you cannot call constructor using an object of the same class okay this you have understood now so you cannot call this you cannot do this so all these are notes for you so for all the constructors these notes are very much important for you and believe me if you you know uh, go through these then you don't need to read or you don't need to understand anything else from any other book at the beginner level at the expert level there are many books there are many there are there is many uh, there are many things there is much material available but yes at the beginners level you are okay if you know those if you know these things but in fact most of the students who starts at the beginner level they don't know about these concepts they don't understand these concepts very well but if you are yeah you know uh, you know you are following me on this channel then in that case you will be very you will be fine to uh, find all these things these basic details okay now let me uh, do one tricky question so this question was asked to me in one of the interview questions uh, 
And so what happened that, uh, you know, the interviewer asked me that you need to, you don't need to write anything inside the main. Okay. You don't need to write anything inside the main, but still you have to print hello world. Okay. So the answer for this is if you, if you can, if you want to stop this video and if you want to, you know, find out the solution for this, then it's okay. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you the solution. What is the solution and how it was solved? So you can write a class. Okay. Uh, suppose demo. I have written this class demo and inside this demo class I created a public constructor anyways you you create the you know uh, constructor as public only because constructor can only be called when they are public okay otherwise they will not be called so if I write like demo and inside demo if I write like see out endl hello world then in that case Without writing inside the main, I can create a global object. Okay, demo D. This is the global object. No matter if it's a global object or you have created it inside the main function, it will anyways call the constructor. If it is a global object, then also it will call the constructor. And if it will be calling the constructor, then hello world will be printed. And you don't need to write anything inside the main function. So that was the tricky question that I wanted to cover today, but you might be aware about this. Many of you might be aware already about this one, but yes, these kind of things sometimes are asked in the interview questions to, you know, trick you uh, to find out like how, you know, your mind is, you know, uh, dynamic, how you can dynamically think of these things. If you have understood the programming, then you can uh, find out the solution to these things. So let me run this and let us quickly see the output. So you can see the hello world printed now and here you go congratulations you have done this okay so with this this particular video comes to an end in the next video we will discuss about the destructors and uh, then after that we will move towards the you know uh, uh, assignment operator copy constructor all those concepts there are many concepts and the XSS specifiers many things are there so be with me and please like subscribe my channel and please share these videos with your friends you will certainly find the based of the material on my channel so <coughs> sorry you will certainly find the best of the material on my channel and keep working uh, hard on your you know exercise part you 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 must need to uh, exercise it yourself you must need to do the exercise yourselves to make you perfect in these things so please be with me share my videos and like subscribe the channel if, and if you have not pressed the notification I, I can yet please do that so that you get the notification on time for all the videos thank you and have a nice day bye bye